Well, friends, Judge Tanya Chutkin just made public special counsel Jack Smith's mega brief detailing the evidence of Donald Trump's democracy busting January 6th crimes. And the brief reads like a 165 page opening statement, a really good one. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, please take the time, please take the time to read Jack Smith's brief that was just made public by Judge Tanya Chutkin because it will convince anyone who has a fact-based view of the world that Donald Trump should never again come within a thousand miles of the Oval Office. Let's start with the new reporting. This from the New York Times. Headline, Judge Unseals New Evidence in Federal Election Case Against Trump. Judge Tanya Chutkin made public portions of a filing by prosecutors setting out their argument for why the case should go forward despite the Supreme Court's ruling on presidential immunity. And that article begins, in a sprawling legal brief, partly unsealed on Wednesday, the special counsel, Jack Smith, laid out his case for why former President Donald Trump is not immune from prosecution on federal charges of plotting to overturn the 2020 election. The redacted brief, made public by Judge Tanya Chutkin of the Federal District Court in Washington, adds new details to the already extensive public record of how Mr. Trump lost the race, but attempted nonetheless to cling to power. Part of the brief focuses, for example, on a social media post that Mr. Trump sent on the afternoon of the attack on the Capitol on January 6, 2021, telling supporters that Vice President Mike Pence had let them down. Mr. Smith laid out extensive arguments for why that post on Twitter should be considered an unofficial act of a desperate losing candidate rather than the official act of a president that would be considered immune from prosecution under a landmark Supreme Court ruling this summer. After Mr. Trump's Twitter post focused the enraged mob's attention on harming Mr. Pence and the Secret Service took the vice president to a secure location, an aide rushed into the dining room off the Oval Office where Mr. Trump was watching television. The aide alerted him to the developing situation in the hope that Mr. Trump would then take action to ensure Mr. Pence's safety. Instead, Mr. Trump looked at the aide and said only, so what? According to grand jury testimony newly disclosed in the brief. Mr. President, an angry mob of your supporters is trying to kill the vice president. So what, said Donald Trump. Let that sink in, friends. You know, for today, I just want to read two short passages from Jack Smith's mega brief, this 165-page opening statement. You know, there is so much sharply incriminating evidence revealed in this motion that we'll be talking about it for days and weeks to come. But for right now, consider this. The defendant, Donald Trump, asserts that he is immune from prosecution for his criminal scheme to overturn the 2020 presidential election because he claims it entailed official conduct. Not so. Although the defendant was the incumbent president during the charged conspiracies, his scheme was fundamentally a private one. Working with a team of private co-conspirators, the defendant acted as a candidate when he pursued multiple criminal means 
to disrupt through fraud and deceit the government function by which votes are collected and counted, a function in which the defendant as president had no official role. In Trump versus United States, the Supreme Court held that presidents are immune from prosecution for certain official conduct, including the defendant's use of the Justice Department in furtherance of his scheme, as was alleged in the original indictment, and remanded, returned to this court, Judge Chutkin, to determine whether the remaining allegations against the defendant are immunized. The answer to that question is no. This motion provides a comprehensive account of the defendant's private criminal conduct, sets forth the legal framework created by Trump, the Supreme Court case, for resolving immunity claims, applies that framework to establish that none of the defendant's charged conduct is immunized because it either was unofficial or any presumptive immunity is rebutted and requests the relief the government seeks, which is, at bottom, this, that the court determine that the defendant must stand trial for his private crimes as would any other citizen. And friends, please indulge me just one more passage. When the defendant, Donald Trump, lost the 2020 presidential election, he resorted to crimes to try to stay in office. With private co-conspirators, the defendant launched a series of increasingly desperate plans to overturn the legitimate election results in seven states that he had lost. Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, the targeted states. His efforts included lying to state officials in order to induce them to ignore true vote counts, manufacturing fraudulent electoral votes in the targeted states, attempting to enlist Vice President Michael Pence in his role as President of the Senate to obstruct Congress's certification of the election by using the defendant's fraudulent electoral votes, and when all else had failed, on January 6, 2021, directing an angry crowd of supporters to the United States Capitol to obstruct the congressional certification. The through line of these efforts was deceit. The defendants and co-conspirators knowingly false claims of election fraud. So friends, it will soon be time for Judge Chutkin to begin holding hearings to litigate these issues. Whether a sitting president of the United States gets to commit all kinds of crimes in violation of our nation's laws against the American people to try to unlawfully retain the power of the presidency, contrary to the expressed will of the American voters. So let the litigation begin. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.